Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn. So today we will start a tutorial with an example. Imagine a world where computers can write stories, draft legal documents, translate languages, and even hold conversations that feel human. It's the power of large language models. Take GPT-3 by OpenAI for example. This AI marvel with its 175 billion parameters can generate coherent essays, create poetry, and even code, all from simple prompts. Or consider the Megatron Turing NLG 530B, a collaboration between NVIDIA and Microsoft, boasting an astonishing 530 billion parameters, excelling in complex language tasks like reading comprehension and natural language inference. These models are transforming industries. In healthcare, they are predicting protein structures and disease patterns. In finance, they are summarizing earnings calls and in customer service, they are powering dynamic chatbots. The journey from early models like Eliza which debuted in 1966 to today's sophisticated LLMs showcase an incredible leap in AI capabilities. So join us guys as we delve into how these models work, their applications and what the future holds for this groundbreaking technology and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss on any update. And let's jump in. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before we start, here's a quick info for you guys. If you want to learn AI and ML from the industry experts, try Simply Learn's postgraduate program in AI and ML from Purdue University in collaboration with IBM. This course teaches in demand skills such as machine learning, deep learning, NLP, computer vision. Reinforcement learning, generative AI, prompt engineering, chat GPT, and many more. So don't forget to check out the link from the description box and pinned comment. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let's start with large language models. And large language models are advanced AI systems that are designed to understand, generate, and manipulate human language. And they are trained on vast data sets and use deep learning techniques to predict and generate text. So this enables them to perform a variety of tasks such as translation, summarization, and even creative writing. Now we'll delve into the evolution of these models from their early forms to the revolutionary transformer models. So we'll start from RNNs to transformers. So humans see text as words, sentences, and paragraphs. But for computers, text is just a sequence of characters. Initially, recurrent neural networks that are RNNs were used to help machines understand text. And these models process one word at a time which sometimes leads to forgetting earlier parts of the sequence. But there's a game changer. There comes transformer models. In 2017, the introduction of the transformer model revolutionized this field. Unlike RNNs, transformers use an attention mechanism, allowing them to consider the entire sentence or paragraph simultaneously, rather than one word at a time. This approach significantly improves context understanding. So now we'll see how transformers work. So transformers first tokenize text into words or subwords. And these tokens are then encoded into numerical representations and converted into embeddings, which future capture their meanings. The encoder pre-processes these embeddings to create a context vector that represents the entire input. We'll understand this with the help of an example. So here's an example. And the sentence is, as she said this, she looked down at her hands. So now first we'll convert into tokenization. The sentence is broken down into smaller pieces called tokens. As you can see on the screen, we have shifted all the words and provided into inverted commas. Now we'll process with encoding. So each of these tokens is then converted into a numerical representation. Think of it as giving each word a unique number. And now we'll process with embeddings. So these numbers are then turned into vectors, which are multi-dimensional representations that capture the meaning of each token. For instance, the word she and her might have similar vectors because they often appear in similar context. Now we'll process with context vector. So the encoder pre-processes all these vectors together to understand the entire sentence. It creates a context vector which is like a summary of the meaning of the whole sentence. And at last, we have autoregressive generation. So using the context vector, the decoder can start generating new text. It might predict the next word in a sequence based on the context if it has learned. For example, given the context, it might generate the word and next, leading to a continuation of the sentence. 
Now let's break down the transformer architecture and understand how all these processes are coming. So this is the diagram for transformers and this architecture comprises an encoder and a decoder each with multiple layers. So starting with the encoder, the first layer is input embedding. So the input text is tokenized and converted into embeddings that is vector representation. And after that we have positional encoding. This is the second layer. This adds information about the position of each token in the sequence. And after that we have multi head attention. That's a layer and it allows the model to focus on different parts of the input sequence simultaneously, capturing various aspects of the input. And after that we have add and norm layer. So this adds the input of the previous layer and normalizes the result. And then we have feed forward layer. So this is a fully connected feed forward network that pre-processes or processes the attention outputs. And after that we have again the add and norm layer. This adds the input of the previous layer and normalizes the result again. So this structure is represented n times that is indicated by nx. And now we'll move to decoder. So decoder has the first layer that is output embedding. This is similar to input embedding but for the target sequence. And after that we have positional encoding layer. This adds positional information to the target sequence. And then we have mask multi head attention. This processes the target sequence while masking future tokens to prevent the model from looking ahead. And then we have add and norm layer. This adds the input of the previous layer and normalizes the result. Then we have multi head attention. This attends to the encoder's output, allowing the decoder to focus on relevant parts of the input sequence. And then we have add and norm layer. This adds the input of the previous layer and normalizes the result. And then we have feed forward layer, another fully connected feed forward network. And then we have add and norm layer. This adds the input of the previous layer and normalizes the result. And at last we have linear and softmax layer. So the final layer that convert the decoder output into probabilities, predicting the next token in the sequence. So this was all the process flow and the encoder processes the entire input sequence creating a set of encoded representations. And the decoder generates the output sequence step by step using the encoded input and previously generated output tokens. Now talking about why transformers can predict text. So there are two mainly reasons. Number one is redundancy in language and the next is entropy and predictability. Now talking about the key concepts. Number one is attention mechanism. So it enables some model to weigh the importance of different tokens in the input sequence, improving context understanding. Then we have positional encoding. It helps the model understand the order of tokens, which is crucial for meaning in language. Then we have multi-head attention. It improves the model's ability to capture different relationships in the data by focusing on various parts of the sequence simultaneously. And this architecture allows the transform model to handle long sequences and complex language tasks effectively making it a cornerstone of modern NLP applications. Now that we have understood how transformers work, let's discuss what makes large language models so popular and the capabilities. So a large language model is a type of artificial intelligence algorithm that uses deep learning techniques and large data sets to understand, summarize, generate and predict new content. They are a subset of generative AI specifically designed to create text based content. Now talking about its historical context, so language is crucial for communication, but in AI, language models serve to communicate and generate concepts. One of the earliest AI language models are ELISA that debuted in 1966. And then we have modern LLMs like GPT-3 and Megatron Turing and LG 530B that are vastly expand on this idea of billions of parameters, allowing them to understand and generate text more effectively. Now we'll see the examples. Number one, as we have discussed, that is GPT-3 that is released by OpenAI in June 2020 and this model has 175 billion parameters and can generate text and code from short prompts. It's highly versatile and can perform a wide range of language tasks. And after that we have Megatron Turing and LG 530B that is developed by Nvidia and Microsoft and this model boasts 530 billion parameters and it excels in reading comprehension and natural language in French, making it one of the most powerful LLMs to date. So now we'll explore the various capabilities of these large language models and how they are utilized. So starting with the capabilities. So the capabilities start with generation. So they can create stories, marketing content and more. For instance, GPT-3 can write a coherent article or generate creative writing pieces. Then we have summarization. So condensing legal documents, meeting notes or any lengthy text into concise summaries. This is particularly useful in legal and corporate settings. And then we have 
translation as a capability. So converting text from one language to another or even translating text into code. This makes LLMs invaluable in global communication and software development. Now we'll move to classification. It can analyze text to determine sentiment, classify topics or identify toxic language. This can help in moderating online content and understanding customer feedback. And after that, we have another capability that is chatbots. So building virtual assistant and Q&A systems that can interact with users in a human-like manner that provides customer support or general information. So these were all the capabilities. Now we'll look at some real world applications of LLMs across various industries. And we'll start with healthcare. So LLMs are used to predict protein structures, uncover disease patterns, and analyze medical text and patient records. This can lead to breakthroughs in medical research and personalized healthcare. Then we have retail as real world application. It can enhance customer service through dynamic chatbots that can handle inquiries, provide recommendations and improve the shopping experience. And then we have real world application in software development. And after that, we have software development. So LLMs assist developers in writing code, debugging and even teaching robots to perform physical tasks. And then we have finance as real world application. So LLMs can summarize earning calls, creating meeting transcript and analyzing financial documents to provide insights and support decision making. And then we have marketing as real world application. It can organize customer feedback, segmenting products and generating compelling marketing content. Now that we have seen their applications, let's understand how large language models work and the learning techniques they use. So large language models work with training with unsupervised learning. So LLMs are trained using unsupervised learning, which means they learn from large data sets without label data. They find patterns and relationships in the data, enabling them to perform various tasks like text generation, summarization, and translation. And there are three types of learning for the LLMs. And we'll see number one is zero short learning. So zero short learning, LLMs can perform tasks they were not specifically trained for. And thanks to the extensive training data for this. And then we have one short learning. So they can learn from a single example to improve their performance on a specific task. Then we have few short learning. So learning from a few examples, enhancing their ability to generalize and perform tasks accurately. And then we have customization techniques for LLMs. Number one customization technique is prompt tuning. So adjusting the prompts or instructions given to the model to guide its response more effectively. And number second is fine tuning. So retraining the model on specific data sets to improve its accuracy for certain tasks. Then we have adapters. So adding smaller network to the model, allowing it to adapt to specific tasks without needing to retrain the entire model. That's the adapters and the customization technique for LLMs. Now we'll move to the types of large language models. And number one type is encoded only models. So these models are excellent for understanding tasks such as classification and sentiment analysis. An example is BERT, that is bi-directional encoder representations from transformers. Now moving to second type of large language model that is decoder only models. So these models are great at generating text such as writing stories or articles. An example is GPT-3, that is generative pre-trained transformer 3. And then we have third type of large language model that is encoder decoder model. These models combine understanding and generation, making them ideal for tasks like translation and summarization. An example is T5, that is text to text transfer transformer. Now we'll move to advantages and challenges of large language models. So starting with advantages, Number one is extensibility. So LLMs serve as a foundation for various customized use cases, allowing for adaption to numerous tasks. Then comes flexibility. LLMs apply across diverse tasks and deployments from chatbots to content creation. And then we have performance. So LLMs provide high speed, low latency responses, making them efficient and responsive. And the accuracy. So there's an improved accuracy with more parameters and larger training data set. And the ease of training. It utilizes labeled data, which accelerates the training process and then comes efficiency. So LLMs automate routine tasks, saving time and resources. And now coming to challenges. So number one challenge is development cost. So it requires significant investment in hardware and large data sets. And then comes operational cost. So high ongoing expenses for running and maintaining LLMs. Then there comes bias. So it's potential for inheriting biases present in the training data. Then comes ethical concerns. There are issues around data privacy and generating harmful content. Then comes explainability. So there's a difficulty in explaining how the models generate the results. And then there's the last challenge that is hallucination. So there's a risk of generating inaccurate or nonsensical responses from the LLMs. 
Now talking about the future of large language models, the future of LLMs is very promising with continuous improvements in accuracy, efficiency and applications. Businesses will increasingly leverage LLMs for various tasks, enhancing productivity and innovation. So in conclusion, so large language models are transforming the AI landscape by understanding and generating human-like text. While they come with challenges, their potential to revolutionize various industries is immense. So stay tuned for more AI insights and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you have any doubts, you can comment down in the comment section below. Till then, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.